the theme park capital of the world, bringing you the latest in theme park news. Welcome to the Thrill Geek Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Thrill Geek Podcast. I am Clint. I'm Barry. I'm Janine. And we have a lot of catching up to do. Did <laughs> um, we forget to think... record a podcast? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, it was kind of my fault. I had to go on vacation-ish, kind of. Not really, va- I really wasn't a vacation, I guess. I, mean, I, guess, I guess it was vacation. I had to take my boys up to camp, um, so that kind of threw us off a week. And then we dropped the two Disney episodes that Barry and I did kind of close together. So we wanted time for the Tiana's Bayou Adventure and then our Disney Cruise Line episode to kind of sit there and marinate and let people listen to those. Uh, and then I went on my trip. So that pushed it back another week. So here we are. Um, and this episode is going to be strictly universal. Uh, so uh, we have a lot to talk about. We're going to be talking HHN, um, most of the summer stuff, all the new summer stuff going on at Universal. Um, and then we're going to wrap it up at the end with our, our Dark Universe discussion because we have not gotten to that yet, even mm-hmm. though it was announced, what, like how many weeks ago? So uh, I don't think we should waste any time. I think we should get right on into it. Slideshow up here for all of you watching the YouTube version. Uh, if you are watching the YouTube version, thank you. We appreciate you guys. Make sure you're subscribed, all that jazz. Uh, So, yeah, we're going to start off first with some of the summer stuff going on at Universal. Uh, First things first is Hogwarts Always, the new nighttime show over there at Islands of Adventure in Hogsmeade. Uh, Janine has not seen it yet. So um, it's, you know, it's it's a Hogwarts projection show about, you know, your your year at Hogwarts. It, It starts from start to finish. Barry, what did you what did you think about Hogwarts Always compared to some of the other? I mean, we've had the, what the, the there's the, the Christmas one, there's the, the house one. one, and then there's yeah the the um, gosh, I can draw a blank on the one. Death Eater, yeah, yeah, the spooky one, I call it. The spooky <laughs> one. Um, I mean, the biggest thing is they've upgraded the projectors to 4K, so this is a 4K projected show. They've added more firework launches. They've added more comp- their uh, computerized lights. I like it. it. I think it's way better than the previous regular house show. Um, yeah. Like I said, it takes you through a year at Hogwarts. Um, the design of it is really is really great. The great thing is, like every time you watch it, a different house wins at the at the end of the year. Um, so you have one of four uh, endings you get to this show. When we were there for the media preview, I think Hufflepuff or no, uh, Ravenclaw won the first time. Yeah, and then I think Slytherin Slytherin won the second, won the second time. <laughs> I I really like I really like the show. Um, in design, it's right up there with the Christmas show, which I feel like was everybody's favorite ca- Hogwarts Castle show. Um, yeah, the Christmas one has always been my favorite. Um, this one just it's just very traditional Potter. I mean, you get King's Cross. You, there's a Sorting Hat segment. Um, my favorite segment was probably either the Forbidden Forest. There's a Forbidden Forest mm-hmm. section, which is really cool. And then uh, I think projection wise, there's a part there's a part based on Marauders Map. Yeah, and it, it looks really cool, cool with the pro- the new projections and everything. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think you nailed it, Barry, in saying, you know, this is probably one of the better traditional. The Christmas one has always been my favorite uh, projection show at Hogwarts. Uh, it's it's just, you know, the mu- the Christmas mute Potter music and everything has always been great. And I, um, and I feel like it the the newer the new 4K projectors, I mean, it makes a huge It difference. makes a huge difference. Like it's, everything looks it, crisper and clearer and you can actually crisper and clearer and yeah, and they they do a lot of new new projection mapping in this show that is really impressive. Uh but yeah, make sure you guys check it out. It's hap- uh, it does happen uh, nightly over there in Hogsmeade uh at Islands of Adventure. So Moving on, we're going to try and keep a, a quick pace here. So hopefully you guys listening can keep up with us because we have a lot to get to. Um, we can kind of slow down a little bit when we get to our, our Dark Universe stuff. So this this stuff at the beginning. Uh, next up, Sensational. We have not talked about this show yet. And uh, I, feel, I feel ashamed that we have not talked about this show yet because it deserves all of the praise um, yes. possible. Janine, since you really didn't have much to say about, uh, well, you didn't see the Hogwarts Always show, I'll let you kind of take it off here with Sensational. What, what, uh, what do you think about it? What were some of your favorite parts? So yeah, I, I, w- I was told by multiple people I would cry. I did. <laughs> it was. It just felt like the the culmination of all the classic and some of the modern Universal just brought into one. I was blown away by yeah. how well the projections worked, the water worked, the the drones like. 
the drones were out of this world. Um, favorite parts, E.T. Um, E.T. is always a favorite. Um, yeah. the Mummy, Ghostbusters, um, Jaws. <laughs> those are probably my absolute yeah. favorites from it. But just seeing the reactions of everybody also. Um, and that's something that I'm looking forward to going and not only seeing it again as it continues to get better and better, but mm-hmm. going and seeing people's reactions to the show. Um, they knocked it out of the park. Like the score was incredible. It flowed well. It was the right amount of time, I think, for a show. And it's just great to see something happening again, like yeah. having a Lagoon show. I know we all were huge fans of Woolish. And so I think it's something that the park really needed. It really, really needed it. And it lived up to and probably exceeded most of my expectations. And I know from other people who have gone, um, who are also not huge theme park junkies like we are. They're just like, this one of the coolest things I have ever seen. So mm-hmm. well done, Universal. Well you, well, you know, after at the media event, at one point I went and went up to Aiello, Mike Aiello, and was just like, you guys made me cry again. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> Yeah, the ET. I mean, got when the first time seeing the the ET and Elliot on the bicycle to the then over the moon, like I like tears came down my face. Um, yeah. yeah, they have a troll segment in this show, just like they did in the previous show. <laughs> but the remixed version they use of "Can't Stop the Feeling" mm-hmm. and just the entire design of that sequence is one of the to me one of one of the many show stopping sequences in that movie when you get to the chorus and there's like that brief pause and then it's just like an explosion of color mm-hmm. yeah that i think one of the things that worked the best is is they went with the music first in de- in designing this show we all sort of know the previous show they were sort of like forced to pick certain things that they had to be in the show and yeah. take up whole segments and as we've seen, as we know, we've seen uh, over with the Halloween Horror Night show. Once they started uh, working with that platform, they realized film clips don't work as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stylized stuff does, animated stuff does. It just pops better on the water screens and on the projection mapping. And uh, I just like that they, you know, most of the show is stuff that's created specifically for the show. Mm-hmm. It's just not clips for movies. Yeah. Um. The and the great thing about this this show, it's not a drone show. The mm-hmm. drones are an added part of the show, which I feel like is some, something. You know, we've always seen uh, <clears throat> that the best way to use drones is they're part of a bigger show. Not that there's anything wrong with Disney Dreams at Shore. Soar. It's a cute short show. Sure. But if that was the nighttime spectacular in a park, I would be incredibly disappointed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, with dr- with drones, um, I, that's kind of the feeling. I I think Universal nailed it. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you, Barry. Yeah. I'll let you get back here in a second. But I wanted to uh, kind of go off what you were saying about the drones. Um, you know, it, the the drone only shows are great at like like you said the the Disney one that's like what six seven minutes long. Yeah. Um, you know, but I I I never saw a theme park using drones specifically just drones for a nighttime spectacular. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, sorry. Go ahead, Barry. And I mean, just overall, the entire show is is. And I hate to compare it to World of Color, but I think in in one aspect, one of the things if you've seen World of Color, the show builds and builds and builds as mm-hmm. you go through the show, and they don't reveal all of the amazing things their show platform can do. Um, and I'm talking about the original World of Color show, not the one that's playing now. Um, but that's the way this show is. You don't get the drones until you until you until you get until what four minutes four mm-hmm. four or five minutes into the show yeah yeah you know, with the great reveal of toothless in drone form <sighs> so um, cool <laughs> and they used it like probably the coolest thing they use the drones for is the lightning strike and back and from back to the future to the hitting future. hitting the clock tower it's, that was it's, so unbelievable like yeah. it's it's thinking outside the box I feel like with this show that they really. Even one of the be- one of the coolest drone moments in the whole show is when you get to the beginning of the finale, and basically the sheet the the lines from from uh, sheet music are like twirling around yeah. and stuff. Um, but the entire show is great. It's it's not just a drone show. It's not just a fountain show. It's not it's, just a projection show. It's not just yeah. a fireworks show. It is combining all those elements. It's so holistically why- done. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I mean I feel I feel like. This time they sort of let them do what they wanted to do. And, and it showed. And, <laughs> and yeah. It showed. 
that that there was there's there was a passion into this show that just didn't felt like it's some corporate thing where we got to hit we got to put this franchise this ip in and this ip in and this ip in yeah yes there's a fast and furious segment and it's actually a hundred <laughs> times better than the one that was in the previous <laughs> movie that's good so, and it's yeah it's a good segment too coming from a fast it, and furious it, fan over here <laughs> but uh, um the great thing we've seen with the show, the parade, and really, I feel like the last couple of years is Universal finally letting Universal Creative, Universal Entertainment, the parks, Universal Entertainment, lean into the nostalgia, mm-hmm. yeah. lean into the things that that Universal has. You know, they don't have all the animated classics like Disney does, mm-hmm. yeah. but they do have DreamWorks stuff now, and of course, they have Illuminations. They also have they have Back to the Future. They have E. T. You know, they have some yeah. of the some of the most famous and they, you know, they've obviously made a deal with Sony, uh, some sort of long term deal with Sony now with Ghostbusters. Yeah. Uh, having Ghostbusters in the in, back in the Universal Parks. Which so is just like, phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, Ghostbusters is in the in, in the show. It's not a universal film. It's just great to see because and that was the other thing too, is this show is not just it has some tie-ins to the park, which the other show really didn't. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I just think overall, you know, everyone, you know, I think it's now one of the best shows in Orlando. It's one of the best theme park nighttime shows I've ever seen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, I agree. You know, we made it. We made the, you, as you remember, when we made those posts, it's like some people were just like, oh, it's not as good as Happily Ever After. Happily Ever After <laughs> is a different show. Yeah. Yeah. And I hate to say it as much as I love Happily Ever After, Happily Ever After is starting to look long in the tooth now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and dated. This is what we've wanted for years is the Universal yeah. to knock out a, a, a nighttime show. You know, it, I think it's been the one thing the studios has always had a problem with is keeping people in the park until the end of the night. Yeah. Cause a lot of times they would just go over. People would leave studios, go over to I, if they have park hoppers, go over at islands and, you know, try to ride Velocicoaster, you know, mm-hmm. try to ride stuff and, and studios would be dead at night. And, you know, and they tried it with the first show. It did. Okay. But I mean, you could tell towards the end, you know, it wasn't filling up the way it used to. Yeah. Hopefully this show will continue to be popular. And it's also, it's the first time we get Nintendo in the parks. So. Yeah. Yeah. We got yeah. Peaches, which was un- right, unbelievable. Was I, lo- so I love fun. this show. I, as everyone can hear, it's like, I love the show. Janine loves the show. And I know Clint loves the show. So mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, you guys pretty much, you know, I'm not going to spend too much time because uh, you guys pretty much nailed it for me, um, you know, is barry's analogy of of world of color i told that to to mike aiello yeah because we we watched sensational and then they bust us over to ioa for um hogwarts always and after that we we kind of chit chatted for a quick minute with mike yeah. and i i told him that this is you know i hate to use it like barry said i hate to use a disney analogy but i was like this is your guys's world of color mm-hmm. and oh yeah he took it to heart and he was like, that means a lot. And I was like, no, I was like, I really mean it. This is, this show was phenomenal. So yeah. um, if you are at universal Orlando uh, this summer, make sure you see sensational. Um, if you see any nighttime, if you have to choose between this and Hogwarts, always pick sensational. Yeah. <laughs> um, it is phenomenal. You will not be disappointed. And um, you have definitely as not as busy as the parks have been this summer, you've had to get there. If you want to spot 30 minimum yeah. 30 minutes before the show starts. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. all right, moving on. Uh, we're not going to spend too much time on the universal mega movie parade. I know this is part of universe Orlando's new summer um, additions along with Cine Station, along with Hogwarts always um, because it is in technical rehearsals and they are working out a lot of the kinks still. Um, so I kind of want to reserve full judgment, our, our full thoughts on it. And once this parade is, is fully operational, because as we've seen, you know, it, it's run days with not all the floats, not all the audio working. Um, so I, I do kind of want to, the parade looks great. The mm-hmm. floats that they have out right now look absolutely Ridiculous. fantastic. Yeah. Um, 
you know, (laughs) but we're not going to spend too much time talking about it in the state that it is right now, because it wouldn't be fair for, you know, it wouldn't be fair for us. It wouldn't be fair to universal. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but we, I I wanted to quick mention it that, you know, we will revisit it, uh, on a later recording of the podcast, just not right now. Um, you know, and and Barry, Barry hasn't seen it yet. As you know, universal is normally really tricky about picking opening days and Mm -hmm. yeah, they thought they would have this thing ready by July 3rd, but clearly it is not. This is one of the most technically, technically, uh, I'm trying to word I'm going to say. It is one of the most technically ambitious parades anyone's ever done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, this is like, and this thing's the size of like a Tokyo Disney parade. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, this, this is big for Universal Orlando. For Universal this is big Studios for Universal Florida. Orlando. And once it yeah. is full, it is fully debuted. It is the biggest parade in all in all of Orlando. One of I mean, the biggest, one of the biggest parades in any theme park. Yeah. Just look at the scale of the floats and the details and everything of what we've been able to see so far. Like, it is wild. What well, so, was wild it, about the E.T. float is the first time I saw, like, the pictures video. I didn't realize that was performers on the bikes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, every, yeah. any other float you would have saw, it would just be, like, you know, mannequins or something. And, and uh, it's performer. Yeah. Yeah. It's just wild. Just some, that- some of the. The one thing I would want to call out is shout out to the performers who've been doing it so far. Like you can tell they are having so much yeah. fun yeah. in their roles and seeing all of the videos that have come forward. Like, I feel like that's such a quintessential part of the universal theme park interactions that we've been missing is those type of character interactions. Sure. And it's again, it's, it, it's it, great it was to really see. fun to see. And I can't wait to see yeah. what they continue to do with it. I, as it I think that's fun. That's definitely one of the things that stood out so far is the fact you have these amazing, impressive floats. Uh huh. But then you have performers on the ground in character performers like you know the the mayor from Jaws, uh, Chief Brody, the some of the Ghostbusters. You know, they're interacting with the crowd as they go through through the uh, through the, through the prey. Yeah, I can't wait to see this thing once it's ready in its full form. Also, yes, yeah. it's. it's so it's getting um, there. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, what we see right now is really great. Um, you know, it is in technical rehearsals, like I said. So we will definitely uh be revisiting the Universal Mega Movie Parade um when it's out of technical rehearsals and it's rocking roll rocking and rolling um at 110%. Uh and uh we'll we'll chat about it some more and, and kind of break it down a little bit better. So I will say one last thing. I'm very happy they're doing this thing at six o'clock. Agree. <laughs> you know, from I was there last night photographing it and filming it. It's not great for photography and videography at six o'clock because the sun is ca- ca- cutting down. So it, it was still miserable at six o'clock. I have the sunburn on my nose. You can't see it in the video, but well, um, I think I think it's part of their strategy. They want people to stay later in the yeah, studio. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and it will so. go up to two o'clock when HHN kicks off. So yeah. Um, so anyways, speaking of HHN, good segue here. <laughs> uh we have a, I don't have a slide sh- I don't have a slide for this for the video version, um, but we are going to briefly uh get caught up on HHN news. We have two more uh IP houses announced. We have I think we'll talk about A Quiet Place first. And um, yeah, A Quiet Place is coming to Halloween Horror Nights. And um, it'll be based, if I remember correctly, on the first two movies. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I went and saw I went and saw day one at the movie theater. Uh, it was it was pretty good. Joseph Quinn yeah. was good. And um, what's her name? Day um, one. Um, I forget her name. It. Try to say her name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. the problem. The I, movies too. Um, yeah. I know I'm going to be weird about it. I actually enjoyed day one more than I enjoyed the other two movies, <laughs> but it's got a little more heart to it. I mean, yeah. we're not going to get into a movie review no, here, no, but, um, but you know, I liked it. I liked it. Um, but yeah, the other, no, two, the other two movies were one and done for me. So, yeah, I, you know, I mean, I've watched the first one several times. The second one really didn't do too much for me with just her and the, in the, in the kids, you know, and, yeah. um, the second one didn't do it too much for me. Um, but I, I can, I can rewatch the first a quiet place. Yeah. Um, I really like that one. So, uh, Janine, what do you, what do you think about a quiet place? Uh, are you a fan of the movies? Are you I'm excited about movie. it? Yeah, yeah. I'm a fan of the movies, um, to the degree that I've, I've actually purchased them. Um, I've seen them <laughs> quite a few times. Um, I, I love the character design, like the, the design of the actual creatures, the monsters. Like I've, I've said to multiple people, like they give me a little bit of stranger things, Demi Gorgon vibes. So I'm they fully, do. fully vibing with it. 
Um, but I, I think it'll be really interesting to see how they pull it off. And I know that they've mentioned that they're going to have people signing within the house and actually using American Sign Language. And I think there's so many different pieces for opportunity with it of how they can really use and manipulate the quiet and the darkness and everything yeah, sure. from it. Um, there's definitely parts of the first one that were difficult for me to watch. Um, so I'm <laughs> curious what they're going to do scene wise with it. Um, is the but, bridge going to be in, in the house? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I'm, I'm just a little anxious about that. But I, I think the more that I've thought about it, it's going to be really interesting to see what they do. I've also, I have heard people make comparisons of, it's going to be like Creatures from Stranger Things, but the feelings of The Last of Us, which for those who aren't really big horror fans, it really yeah. is a good way to kind of combine like the post-apocalyptic along with these like really weird, but really cool looking creatures. So yeah. I'm excited for it. The fact that it's been rumored that it's in a sound stage and it's going to be really big and grandiose, yeah. I think will be really neat. So um, it's definitely gone further up on the hype list than it was previously. I think mostly because of doing those couple of rewatches and just be like, oh, I love the design of the monsters. Yeah. Like you said, it's it's very uh, mind, uh, not mind flayer, but um, Demogorgon. Very Demogorgon. Or, you know, when their when their face starts to open up and all that stuff. So um, I'll be very curious if those are because, you know, Universal has been very big on the puppet on the puppeteer. So I'll be very curious if those are going to be full on costumes or we're going to be seeing more in the way of uh, puppets with the with the creatures from a yeah. quiet place. So, Barry, I know I we kind of talked about the movie. Is there anything you wanted to say about the about the houses? Uh, no, I, I think I think the fact that, you know, we think it's going to take up a, a whole sound stage as it should. It, there's always been some issues in the past with trying to cram two movies or mm -hmm. two seasons of a show into a house. Um, Stranger Things. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> gotta call but, it. Uh, call it out. But uh, if it if it does end up uh, filling doing an entire sound stage, I, I think you know that it hopefully will should be the longest house of the year. I would I would think. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. But no, I think like I said, it's going to be interesting to see how they pull this off. Yeah. Because you know you're talking about films that are based on silence, mm -hmm. and of course there's going to be a ton of people screaming in the house. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> And when you, you go through an like HHN hundred scare actors coming out of everywhere, every you know, like just like a trigger if somebody screams, like hundred, that hundred would be aliens really coming neat. out of everywhere every time someone <laughs> screams. So the house is going to be everybody just jumping out, going. <laughs> no, I, I have a feeling it will for something like this. They're going to probably, I would think, concentrate on certain set pieces, mm -hmm. from yeah, the two films, and and stick with that. Yeah, it said uh, it said here in the description you'll be traveling through the farmhouse that serves as the Abbott's family shelter. Uh, and stepping into the root cellar where Evelyn Abbott escapes to give birth. Yeah. Do you think, do you think, do you think they're going to have her in there giving birth with the? Uh, oh, that'll. Oh, ooh. That would um, be really rough. Yeah. That. I, I, I don't know if they'll go that far. Yeah. I don't know if they'd go, yeah, <laughs> yeah. go that far. And then it says, uh, and then it says the snarls of the larger than life predators will follow guests at every spine chilling turn, and guests must remember if they hear you, they will hunt you. Um. So yeah, quiet place. Uh, and then the other announcement that we got is Ghostbusters uh, Frozen Empire is coming to Halloween Horror Nights. We're getting the Ghostbusters back. Uh, you know, Universal's on this Ghostbusters kick. They're in the parade. They're in mm -hmm. the nighttime show. And now we're getting, um, you know, given the parade stuff really isn't Frozen Empire, um, you know, I, and the house is going to be based on Frozen Empire. So I'm very hopeful that and praying that this Here's my thing with the original Ghostbusters house that happened a, a couple of years back. It was it was very fun. It was a very fun fun house. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a fun house. It's a um, horror comedy. It yeah, comedy it was house, it was the yeah. horror comedy house. Um, you know the the kind of slapstick house. You know it, and so forth and so on. Um, I I think with Frozen Empire, I think they have the potential to do something a little more scary, mm -hmm. a little mm -hmm. more terrifying. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping that's where, uh, they go with frozen empire is they, fl they kind of flip the coin and instead of making it the comedy horror house, they, they do something a little more serious, a little more, um, because some of the creatures in frozen empire were pretty <laughs> terrifying. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. so, uh, Janine, what do you think about frozen empire? I mean, I to... think we have the exact same thoughts. Love the house in 29. It was great. It was really funny and it was yeah. awesome to see all the scenes really come to life. Frozen Empire has a lot of moments in it that I would say are inherently a bit scarier than mm -hmm. the original movie. And I think some of the creature design is a little bit scarier, too. I mean, we've obviously 
got some of the the same ones that we've seen before. But I just think that it would be a really cool opportunity for them to twist it of like, start the house off fun, start, you know, start off like the slapstick and then just progress into the more frightening portions Mm -hmm. of it. Um, Because I think there's an opportunity a couple for a couple of houses this year to be scary but funny, like the Triplets of Terror and Slaughter Cinema. So it's like, let's make this one a little bit different than what we saw in prior years. But I think either way, it's just awesome that the Ghostbusters are so deeply back at Universal. (laughs) I I, I was talking to my dad about it at one point that when I was little and we went to Universal, I was petrified of the Ghostbusters. <laughs> the Stay Puff Marshmallow gave me nightmares. Mm. Now my kiddos got two stuffed animals and we've got shirts and it's like it's one of my That's favorite awesome. franchises at this point. And so um I'm I'm excited to be obnoxious um going through <laughs> music. So yeah. I, I'm I'm stoked either way, but I agree, Clint. I would love to see them go the, the scarier route just based on some of the creature design. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Uh Barry. Frozen Empire. Yeah, I think I think out of the, out of the four main Ghostbusters films, this one lends itself more mm-hmm. to a house than any of them. Um, so I, hopefully, this house will be very cold. There'll be some uh, huge AC vents uh, hitting you at certain spots. Um, I think the biggest thing with Frozen Empire is it really it was probably the most actiony, um, mm-hmm. like big scale action. Yeah. Uh, of it so there's there's a lot of great pieces in in the film that would lend itself to the house and and like we said clearly universal has signed some deal with sony what does that mean in the future will we get a ghostbusters 2 house will mm-hmm. we get a ghostbusters afterlife house it's like who knows i mean is this going to be like a long time thing maybe every other year give me a ghostbusters yeah. ride sorry yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh no, I, I think this is really has a potential. Um, you know, I, there'll still be some probably comedy bits in, mm-hmm. in the house. Sure, it yeah, has it's Ghostbusters to be yeah. uh, a, a little scarier than than the original Ghostbusters house. Yeah, that's kind of the way I was with it. You know, like I mean, it's the Ghostbusters. You have to have comedy in there. You know, it's 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 what it is with Ghostbusters. Um, but I just hope that they give this house a little more opportunity for it to be the. Uh, not not to be the scariest house of the year you know i just want a few more moments where there's going to be that 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 terror you know scary uh because some of the creatures even what's his name the the main creature i'm not even i can't even remember his name the guy the ice guy with the horns horns. horns, yeah yeah if he's if he's in the house a couple times you know he's pretty terrified um so you know him alone he'll he'll bring some uh some creepiness to the house so yeah no i'm 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 very excited to see how they pull this off and uh yeah we'll we'll have to wait and see so all right getting back uh on track here we're moving along pretty good we're about what 30 minutes in we're good we're good yeah. all right we are going to be going over dark universe the latest oh. land announced for a universal epic universe opening next year at universal orlando resort um i don't know if i could speak for all three of us but <laughs> I don't- Janine, uh, maybe I, I. I think with me, and, with Janine and I, it's a toss up between this and Dragons. Yep, as our favorite land. Barry, I don't know about you. Yes, this one, Dark <laughs> Universe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, look at what Barry and I are wearing today. For for those who aren't viewing, we're both wearing a uh, monster shirts. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, no, we finally got the uh the the details of Dark Universe coming to Universal Epic Universe. And uh, we're going to kind of go over, we're going to quickly kind of skip through um, the food and stuff because there's really not much to talk about. If we want to, we can. I'm going to go ahead and get going here. First, uh, obviously, the area that you're going to be, the I was very curious as to how they're going to bring, uh, you know, because obviously Dark Universe was going to be all of the Universal Monsters together. For for those of you that have watched the video on YouTube that Universal Creative uh, posted, if you haven't watched it, go watch it. There's some really cool information uh, bits in there for you to, to get a closer understanding of, of dark universe. Um, but they basically say in the video that the town of Darkmoor is basically the result of all of the universal monsters coming together in one area. They basically said like, okay, all, all the, all the universal monster movies happened. And this is the result of that. <laughs> <laughs> from from what I remember, the Darkmoor Village uh, looks really cool from all the concept artwork that we got. Uh, they're going to have musical players playing violins. Uh, we've seen some of the aerial photos from Bio Reconstruct on Twitter of like graveyards. Ridiculous. Uh, this photo op of the of the <laughs> uh, 
the coffin looks really fantastic. I hope that'll I hope that hasn't gotten cut and it'll be part of it. <laughs> yeah. Any any thought on any thoughts on Darkmore Village before we move on here, guys? Because we can keep we can keep on trucking. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, mean, I think it, I, really cool. I think, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, uh, much, much with like this entire, um, entire, uh, land. It's just dark, cloudy day at night. This thing is going to shine. And that's why the, <laughs> the park should stay open until 10 every single night. A Florida and, thunderstorm in the background, you know? <laughs> oh, you, whoever gets that first shot of lightning striking behind Frankenstein <laughs> oh, castle. Yeah. Uh, but no, I mean this, this, I, I love like just the detail in, in the, in the, in the fly through and the concept art. Mm-hmm. It's just, I hope they pull this off. It and, looks like I said, some of the aerial photos we've seen of construction, it looks like this is, this land's going to be really, really detailed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, with I don't know so. what it's going to look like on a summer day at 3 PM. In the baking bright, hot, bright, yeah, baking yeah, hot sunshine, but uh, yeah, so um, all right, let's move on to some of the dining options you're going to have in Dark Universe. Uh, first up was Das Steakhouse. Um, and I'm going to kind of read the description of some of these things. Uh, it says Darkmore's most ominous restaurant. This establishment is a dining hall run by vampire familiars who size up unsuspecting patrons to be part of the vampire's feast, surrounded by artwork and artifacts detailing the history of the village's creatures of the night. Guests can enjoy a menu of kebabs, burgers, sandwiches, and more. Um, and I do believe steak. <laughs> well, steak. that's another thing that they mentioned on that Universal Creative video. This the, one of the one of the one of the girls from Universal Creative. She said they're going to have steak on steaks. Steaks, yeah. So I'm wondering if they're going to serve like a steak on like a wooden steak or something. Or just uh, love the puns. Just yeah. love probably it. what the kebabs are. I mean, yeah, yeah, kebab, steak on steak, steak on steak. And then the fun fact that they have on the website it says Doc, Das Steakhouse's many paintings depict the world of vampires from their point of view, painting them as heroes in their stories while displaying mm. some of Darkmoor's <laughs> history and referencing its architecture. I'm really excited about this. It'll be one of the cooler, uh, one of the one of the sit down, obviously restaurants mm-hmm. at in uh, Universal Epic Universe. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. Janine, anything? Yeah. I mean, yeah, same. Yeah. I I think it'll be a really nice addition to the area of the park. And from like the the artist renderings, just the dark, the spooky, like it'll be a nice place to relax after doing all the things that you're doing at Epic. Um, yeah. But yeah. And I, I know yeah. I've said to many people, the sin, the tavern, which we'll be discussing are going to be my new go to spots to hang out. Yeah. <laughs> And speaking of, we can move on to that next. The Burning Blade Tavern. Um, it says, despite the blades of the windmill still smoldering and flames periodically, and flames periodically, Darkmoor's monster hunters have transformed this old fiery mill into their favorite hangout while enjoying a menu of burgers, wings, bratwurst, pretzels, and specialty beverages. Guests will hear stories of the infamous hounds, boastful hunters from beyond Darkmoor, all while surrounded by an impressive display of the monster heads they consider their trophies. This, uh, I, you know, again, we've we've seen the construction photos of mm-hmm. this of this uh, oh, of yeah. the windmill, and it is very impressive. So I, I can't wait to see this thing um, aflame and just oh, yeah. it's it's going to look amazing. So Barry, anything on on the burning? No, windmill? I think I think the like I said, I mean the fact that the blades uh, at multiple times through the throughout each hour are going to catch on fire and even the flames are going to change depending on whether it's day or night. And, uh, and then the detail of, like we've seen some of the concept art inside the tavern, it just, you know, it makes it sound like also that occasionally monster hunters are going to show up in the tavern. Like everything with this land. I mean, it's been every land, but the, the level of detail in this land compared to mm-hmm. some of the other ones, it's just insane. It's yeah. just, it's just wow. And we haven't even got to like, the attractions yet so <laughs> um janine anything on burning blade tavern i mean same thing i already know i'm gonna be <laughs> here more frequently yeah. than i probably want to admit it's gonna, um, it's gonna be the new hangout at Epic. yeah <laughs> but, i mean again like the, the fact that like we've gotten the details of they're using two different fuel types so that you can see the flames so clearly in day or night like the the little details that they're putting yeah. into everything within right. they're doing it in every land throughout epic but i think for us being such universal monsters horror geeks like it is so neat to see all of it starting to come to fruition yeah and you know i i'm sure that universal wanted to do 
their beloved monsters right in a, in a theme park yeah. land. You know, I, I think this was something also they talked about in that Universal Creative video. You know, this is the first theme park land based on Universal Monsters. So yeah. I really don't think yeah. they wanted to screw this up and they wanted to nail it. And from what we're seeing, um, it's it's like it looks like they're going to nail it. Um, <laughs> nail. Nail. Hey, hey. <laughs> rim shot. Uh, Sorry. But I'm. Um, the next one up is uh, DeLacy's Cottage, which they did not have a concept um, artwork piece for this, but it is worth mentioning that this uh, it's going to be like a I'm guessing like a like a like a cottage foods like a food stand food service. Yeah, yeah. Stand. they are going to have cinnamon bread, ladies mm-hmm. and gentlemen, boys and girls. <laughs> cinnamon bread will be at Universal Orlando. Uh, that it says ice cream, twisted taters for all you HHN nerds uh, out there. Woo. Um and more. So uh, the the snacks that you'll be able to get at Delacy's College act, or Cottage, excuse me, you know, cinnamon bread. You, you know, I'm I'm I love Dollywood, yes. and every time I go, I got to get me yes. some cinnamon bread. <laughs> cinnamon bread. So I'm very curious how Universal's uh, going to uh, execute their own version of cinnamon bread with 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 uh, Delacy's Cottage. And then they also mentioned the the merchandise store is going to be called Pretorius's Scientific Oddities. Uh, which will be uh, the merchandise location. So, uh, Barry, did you want to add anything about um, Delacy's Cottage? I know we it's, no. it's food stuff, so we can yeah, kind of we can, we can skip on. through this and yeah. and get to the good stuff here. All right, on to the attractions within Dark Universe. Uh, first up, you're going to be able to meet. Obviously, there's going to be meet and greets with the monsters. Um, I'm going to kind of skip. I'm not going to read this whole description. Um, it says some of the meet and greets everyone from kids to adults, including Doctor Victoria Frankenstein's monster. Uh, the Bride of Frankenstein guests will also encounter other unusual inhabitants robing the eerie village, including Victoria Frankenstein, which is going to be she's going to be the centerpiece of the attraction. We're going to talk about a little bit later. Uh, Igor, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, the Invisible Man, um, so cool. an eccentric monster hunter and a talented musician who regals guests with songs and tales of the classic universal monster stories, which I'm guessing is that violinist that we saw in the, yeah. that concept um, artwork of dark more. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think in, in the thing we haven't really gotten to yet is the, the Mo- universal monsters in dark universe are versions specifically created. For yeah. The dark universe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which we'll get into more in the attraction. And I, I just think, I love that they've created this, uh, this, uh, this specific village. They didn't try to, p- they pulled pieces from all the different films mm-hmm. to sort of sort of fill this village. Um, like I said, it's almost like the mul- the multiverse of all the monsters sort yep. of came together. Finally, be able to meet you know the monsters, even if you know it's in their epic universe version on a regular basis, is something we've wanted here in Orlando for a long time, and you know we pretty much have only gotten them at certain special events and stuff. So. Yeah. 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 Moving on next up uh, for those of you that have visited Walt Disney world or Disney cruise line. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you heard of Bippity Boppity boutique? Well, this is Universal's <laughs> take on it. It is called dark more monster makeup experience. Uh, it says guests of all ages can become fashionably monstrous as they don elaborate face paint and temporary tattoos at dark more monster makeup experience uh, here. Monsters, here, monster makers have converted Dr. Pretorius's infamous old lab into a parlor to continue the spirit of his demented experiments and skilled artisans use their talents to transform guests outer appearances so they can showcase their fandom for the universal monsters. It seems like um, I'm guessing, remember they did the, they did like a monster makeup thing yeah. at Universal mm-hmm. Studios. I'm wondering if that was a test for this. It was a trial I'm to pre- see like how well I'm it performed. I'm pretty sure yeah. it was. It was like a trial run for this. Um, And, you know, I don't know, you know, in, in the concept artwork, we see kids in costume. Like this kid's got obviously like a Dracula costume. I don't know if they're going to, and the description doesn't say anything about costumes. It just says um, yeah. makeup. Uh, what did it say? Uh, it just said outward experiences, yeah. uh, face paint, and temporary tattoos. So I don't know if they're going to go kind of that bippity boppity boutique route where you're going to be able to pick your costume and then you can get your face paint and do the whole nine, or this is just going to be a very basic face paint and temporary tattoo thing. I- I'm very curious where they're going to yeah. go with this. The concept art of it looks cool in general. Of just some place yeah. neat to be able to go and sit and take a look at everything. Yeah. But yeah, I mean. I, I think it'd be really neat to be able to also give kids like this could be for some little ones, their first experience, like getting their face painted or, or getting temporary tattoos, which 
I mean, personally, I think that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it looks super neat. I'm just curious, like whether, whether they're going to go the full, full nine yards with it. And you know, it would make, it would be more, I, I'm sure it would be, it would cost they more do money. That, I imagine that would be for the kids only. Cause yeah. I mean, obviously well, based on the concept art, they have adults in the chairs too. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not expecting, you know, I'm not going to go in there and, you know, get yeah, like a full, like Dracula. Oh, I was going to yeah. say thrill geek trip when. Yeah. I mean, I, I would, I would be you know, around I, as uh, the bride and <laughs> Dracula. And... I'd do it once for the bit, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> like, can you do me up and drag bride of Frankenstein? Like, let's go. Come on. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is dark, more monster makeup experience. So either way, it looks like it'll be a fun experience, you know, for the little yeah. ones, for adults, you know, Something to get some different. monster, ma- monster makeup and tattoos and, um, you know, enjoy your, your visit to, uh, to dark So moving on. And I think we're getting into the good stuff. Now we are yes. moving on to the curse of werewolf, uh, roller coaster. It says deep in the woods that sit on the edge of dark guests will find the curse of the werewolf, a spinning family coaster inspired by the wolf man. Guests will enter the encampment of the Guild of Mystics, where they'll be greeted by Maleva, Maleva, right? Yeah, did I get that right? Maleva, Maleva, uh, yeah. <laughs> the Guild's all-knowing seer and leader, who warns them that they bear the mark of the werewolf. Guests then board a wagon and venture into the forest, racing to escape the werewolf before they become one themselves. Um, and then it goes off uh, the fun facts with some stats. It'll reach thirty-seven miles an hour, uh, over two minutes long. Over through a dark, forbidding, racing through a dark, forbidding sh- uh, shed with mysterious figures clawing ever so near. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Curse of the Werewolf roller coaster. Barry, what do you think about this? I mean, it, at first, coaster. uh, was sort of disappointed it wasn't going to be in a show building. Yeah. Um, but you know, based on more of the concept art we've seen now, it seems like this thing, this, uh, this coaster is sort of provides some sort of some kinetic energy in the land because mm-hmm. there is one section that, based on the concept art, that goes over a pathway. Yeah. Um. So, um, it spins. So yeah. spinning coasters. I don't know <laughs> how many times I'm gonna ride this because, yeah. uh, spinning's not my thing. <laughs> yeah. It, me too. Spinning coasters for me have been one and done. <laughs> I can do like Cobra's Curse at Bush Gardens. I think that's the closest thing we could compare this to. I won't even yeah. get on that anymore. <laughs> um, you know, and at the, that last part where they basically let off the brake oh. and that thing just starts spinning. Yes. I'm going to have to kind of observe this. I mean, I'll ride it once, you know, like yeah. you said, it, it may be a one and done for uh, for us. But, um, you know, I, I'll have to see how much it actually spins. Uh, mm-hmm. Janine, any thoughts on Curse of the Werewolf? Well, I'm the crazy person who's stoked for another spinning coaster. <laughs> the board, You're the I crazy guess. one here. Um, but I, it's another thing too of just the shout out of it's a 40 inch height requirement. It's yeah. good for kiddo. I mean, it's yep. gonna be scary as all heck. I mean, the fact that when we saw the video that the the picture that the for those who are watching the artist rendering that's an animatronic. Yeah, like that's not it's not a static. It's not like the fact no. that we're getting things like that that do look pretty terrifying. Like it's gonna be hardcore for kiddos but <laughs> i'm i'm personally really excited i'm also really curious to see though if they do things like we see on guardians where it spins but there are moments where it locks that you're able to actually see like show scenes and different things like that there's something um, going on yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so that that's my one question is like how is it going to spin is it going to be like cobra's curse where basically like you said you let off the brake it just goes wild or is yeah. it something where it's going to be a little bit more controlled like guardians yeah I mean, in, given in, that the coaster's outside, I don't know how much they could do for show yeah. scenes, but uh, yeah, maybe I mean, you go, maybe you do something. go through like with this concept or you go through a show building at, at one point. Yeah, um, I would imagine at that during that main part right here. And for those of you watching the video version, the shed with the werewolf animatronic, I would imagine yeah. it's not going to be spinning then because that would just be really disorienting people. Yeah. Um, going through this show building and you're spinning away and, you know, just, you know, trying to yeah, look and, up. And, and I think, you know, this, this is definitely, you know, since it's outdoors, it's going to be way more impressive at night than yeah. <laughs> yeah. during the day. Going through the forest, um, you know, it, it, it's almost like Hagrid's, you know, you're going to be going through yeah. the forest, you know. So uh, yeah. I, I think the big thing with this land and I mean, I can't think of maybe how to train your dragon the Potter section is going to be all buildings. Um, Super Nintendo world's all fake. There's no real 
trees or shrubbery in yeah. Super Nintendo World. I think this land is going to be the one, you know, and obviously Celestial Park, the the, the middle portion of Epic Universe. Um, those that area and Dark Universe are going to be the two areas where you know five, ten years from now, when these new trees and bushes mm-hmm. and shrubs. Yeah. really start to grow and full out that'll it'll it'll really help the even though it does look the like land. they're bringing they're bringing in some yeah they've actually trees. already started yeah they've <laughs> actually already started landscaping on several areas of the park from what we've seen from aerial yeah. photos um so yeah no no i was just kind of saying you know it'll it'll i think dark universe once it will, grows in yeah yeah once dark universe grows in with the plants and the trees you know uh, five ten years from now I, I think it'll help out a lot so all right, let's move on to the to the big daddy, the the main attraction in Dark Universe, Monsters Unchained, the Frankenstein uh, experiment. Obviously, uh, you know the main center point of this land is going to be uh, the castle. For those of you watching uh, the Frankenstein castle here, this, I am so excited for this ride. I don't. I mean, I know. You know, I just I I, I can't even put into words how excited <laughs> I am for this ride after yeah. seeing this. The video and th- that Universal Creative video just it hyped me up so much. Um, mm-hmm. It says Universal Orlando's most terrifying attraction yet. The state of the art dark ride takes guests deep into the catacombs of Frankenstein Manor, where Doctor Victoria Frankenstein conducts her twisted experiments in a vain display of her genius. She invites guests into her laboratory to witness a demonstration of her ability to control monsters. But just like every other ride at Universal Orlando Resort, something goes terribly wrong. wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It says in a vain uh, display of her genius, she invites her guests in a demonstration her control monsters. But her plans go awire when she when her attempts to control the monster dangerous, the most dangerous of the monsters, Dracula, fail, unleashing a horde of enraged monsters. Guests are then thrust into an intense ride through the darkness as they try to evade the grasps of the Wolfman, the Mummy, the Creature from the Black Lagoon, the Brides of Dracula, and others. Just that lineup right there. Just mm. those. <laughs> We're getting Creature finally. Yeah, Creature from the uh, yeah uh, Black Lagoon. Um, you know the Wolfman. They showed a clip of the Wolfman animatronic in that Universal Creative video. And it is mind blowing. I think Universal's that, finally they're they're upping their animatronic game, which I've always I've always wanted from them to, mm-hmm. you know that that's one thing that with Universal that I've always been uh, like like mummy animatronic. You know they just they're so dated, and yeah. it yeah. looks like they're going to go all out with the animatronics on um on this ride. Um yeah, I'm 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 beyond excited. I can't even put it into words. Uh, so if you guys want to chime in. Um, chime in. <laughs> I think you covered it. It's gonna be <laughs> ridiculous and intense, and I, yeah, I'm very excited. No, I mean, I, I think, and everything we're hearing that this is this is going to be like the centerpiece ride of the entire park. This is the one that they have that they have put like just some of the most impressive things they've ever done in. This is really the this is I think the ride that the attraction that's going to blow a lot of people away. The queue from the video looks absolutely amazing. Like this photo, oh. like, come on, this is a queue for an attraction. <laughs> like <laughs> it's just, it's mind blowing. The detail that we saw from the concept artwork um, of the, the fly through of the queue uh, with Victoria Frankenstein's portrait up there, uh, you know, and it, it gets like a claw mark through it, almost like beauty and the beast type style. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, I mean the fact that it, it, this attraction will use the the Kuka arm, you know, like like her, uh, Forbidden Journey, except this is the newest version, and this I believe this version the Kuka arm does things that uh, the, the other the like on, on Forbidden Journey, like it's a lot smoother than they used to, than the than it. So yeah, I, I just I can't wait. I just I cannot wait to 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 go through the queue and get on this attraction for the first time because i'm <laughs> mm-hmm. i try not uh, to get too overhyped about stuff but like I yeah said, you know like we've it's said it's hard we we know some people who are working on epic universe and they are like subtly hinting that this thing is the well, it's gonna be mind suddenly hitting they're hinting that this thing's going to just blow people's minds mm-hmm. yeah uh janine anything 
I mean, it's it's all the same. Like the, <laughs> the, the sheer fact of like again, all the things that we've heard and we've seen. It's just the the countdown to an opening needs to get here soon. It needs to get here um, quicker. Yeah, it really does. But I think this is definitely one that we have had so much hype for that it is going to live up to the hype. I, I I'm I'm stoked. The fact that we are getting this much Universal Monsters representation in. <laughs> a brand new theme park is yeah. just wild to me. So I don't think that this is something that would have happened like 10 years ago. Mm-mm. And so it's just incredible to see like how they're really doing such great fan service again yeah. and listening to the fans of the parks and listening to the fans of, you know, just universal in general. Everyone yeah. knows the universal monsters, whether they've ever watched the films, mm-hmm. they know who, who the universal, they know who Frankenstein is. They know who Dracula is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even yeah, especially I feel like in the last five, 10 years, they know who the bride is. It's, it's, yeah. you know, it's everyone knows these monsters. Um, if it gets Disney to build a villain's land, then hey, hey, it's a win, 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 win for all of us. Yeah. Uh, if, if universal does something spooky and it works, you know, Hey, Disney, let's go villain land. Chop, chop. So, <laughs> um, so, no, I think, I think like I said, we're, we're all hyped for this and agree. I can't, I, I obviously can't wait to visit the land for the rest. Of, I can't wait for to be in that land after dark for the first. Yeah. Time. Yeah. It's, I think it's, nighttime, it's, you know, we're, we're suckers, you know, and I, I think, you know, Janine is too. We're suckers for uh nighttime theme park visits, you know, cause yes. oh, yeah. theme parks, you know, they just, whether you're at magic kingdom, whether you're at universal, whether you're at any theme park, theme parks at night just hit differently. There's and, something you know, different. there's just something different about when the lights come on oh, yeah. and it's just got this different, just vibe to it. Um, You know, like last night I never made it to IOA, but after I saw the, the mega movie parade, I was contemplating going over to because IOA was open until ten o'clock, and I was like, "Oh, I can make I can take a nighttime stroll around IOA, like my favorite <laughs> time." And I never got it because I was exhausted. And I was like, "I got to go yeah. home." Um, but hot. yeah, yeah, it's it's very it's July in Orlando right now. So, I um, mean, aren't we also getting fog in this land? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Give it. We'll have year round fog. This year-round is basically going to be a year round HHN for us, you know. And so yeah. all of us HHN nerds are just, you know, chomping at the bit to get into this land and just have something spooky year round. Um, and then I forgot to mention uh, the fun fact on the website on this land is really cool. It says the Phantom of the Opera's organ within the Monsters Unchained, the Frankenstein experiment will feature fourteen individual flame points that shoot vertical flames over three feet in the air and dance in synchronicity with the organ music. We're getting flame throwing organs in this ride. <laughs> if, as, and Phantom. Yeah. And Phantom. Yeah. So as if you needed another reason to be excited about this ride, it the, the Phantom's organ is going to be shooting flames out of it. So it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm beyond excited for this land. Yeah. And I think that pretty much wrapped it up. We yeah. got through that pretty quick and pretty good. So I think we're going to wrap things up here. Um, again, this was this was a, a big universal update. I think we're going to start getting back on a regular track here. Uh, and uh, and we, we still have we still have more catching up to do with some of the stuff Barry's been going to. Uh, Janine's going to have some stuff to talk about here coming up soon. Um, so we're not slowing down. We still got a lot more to get caught up on. Um, this was just one big universal uh, update recording. So uh, we appreciate you guys as always listening. Um and uh yeah, I think we're gonna wrap it up. Anything else you guys want, Janine, Barry? I think we're I think we're good, no. right? Enjoy yeah. all this universal news. Next time <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of Disney. <laughs> yeah. Be a lot yeah. Of yeah. Yeah, we're kind of flip flopping, you know. And I, I I don't mind doing this. Um, you know, it's just it's the summertime right now, so things may get a little bit you know, as we get towards the fall. I mean, obviously Halloween Horror Nights is a busy time yeah. for us mm-hmm. on the podcast um but you well, know we, we'll, we've had so much stuff in the last month yeah. <laughs> we're still trying to get caught we're up. still you know this is this is where the bi-weekly podcast thing is biting us in the butt um, you know, <laughs> i know too much. it's a lot you know so we've well, been we, having we've a, already we've already had two bonus podcasts so. yeah it could be worse. We could have stuff not to talk about, you know, back, yeah. back when we did the podcast and we did it every week, there would be weeks where we didn't have like anything to talk about. And yeah. it was, we can't be complaining too much that we have too much to talk about. So anyways, uh, I think we're going to wrap it up get on out of here. Uh, Janine, where can everybody follow you online? Anybody uh, you want to plug your Instagram? 
Um, I mean, my, my, my ex is, um, at Janine Brandt underscore, but, um, I'm actually going to be changing mine pretty soon to be more Ooh. cohesive channel by channel. So stay tuned. Ooh. Exciting. <laughs> I'm excited. Oh, we're all here <laughs> for a rebrand, right? Right. Yep. Uh, Barry at culture and thrills on Twitter, Instagram, threads, TikTok, blue sky, <laughs> <laughs> YouTube. I haven't posted on the Thrill Geek Blue Sky in like months. Uh, I just, yeah, everywhere there. Right. Yep. Um, some, I'm out there. Somewhere out there. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry>. um, <laughs> and, and then uh, as far as me, you can follow me on uh, Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, Instagram, uh, at IMCG83. Uh, and yeah, just Twitter and Instagram. I mean, I occasionally post on my Instagram. I'm, I'm mostly active on Twitter, X. Um, and all that jazz. Uh, and we and are I'll, at Thrill Geek on every social media platform. <laughs> we are. We are. <laughs> Follow us, Thrill Geek, everywhere. Yeah, um, YouTube.com slash Thrill, Thrill Geek. Please uh, like and subscribe to our YouTube page. We have a bunch of video, new videos up there, and um, we've got some more coming. Um, we still haven't even posted all the cruise line stuff. So. I know. I know. It's, 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 but it's uh, we've already got, we've already got part one of our weekend stay at DVC cabins, which will, the DVC cabins at Fort Wilderness, which we will talk about next time. And part two is coming soon. Uh, make course. sure you definitely subscribe. What? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> See, um, you stopped me. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I'm sorry. You um, interrupted yeah. my flow. I know, I know. Uh, you're good. You you nailed it. You got everything. Um, and thrillgeek.com so, for the latest in theme park and pop culture news. <laughs> there you go. And um, reviews now too. Yeah, Barry's been Barry's been knocking out reviews. I've been so proud of him. Give him a pat on the back. Everybody give no, Barry a, ba- a pat. Hey, on Barry. The back. It's something I feel like we 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 talked about. We just needed to start. Yeah. Going. Nope. Nope. I agree. You know, and, uh, you know, so hopefully you guys have been enjoying those. Barry and I did our, our cruise line ones and stuff like that. And all, you know, trying to break out of our norm and doing some different stuff on, on it would, as far as like articles on the website. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate you guys. As always, I know this one was a little, well, well, just a, an hour. Um, you know, it'll be under an hour after I edit the crap out of it. <laughs> um, so uh, we appreciate you guys as always. If you listen to us on Apple Co- Apple Podcast, why do I always say Apple Cod Pass? It's so for weird. fun. Yeah, I guess I just keep myself on edge. If you listen to us on Apple Podcast, make sure you leave us a five star review. Uh, it helps us out greatly. It helps us, um, you know, be exposed to more listeners and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Which is why we do this. You know, we want to reach more people. We want more people to listen. Um, and you know, help spread the word. You know, if people are looking for a new theme park podcast, uh, we we suggest you recommend the Thrill Geek podcast. So, anyways, guys, take care, be safe, and we will see you guys next time. Stay safe. Bye. See you in the parks.